Hello everybody and welcome back to Robert's Reviews. Today is Friday, so I do as many new releases as possible. I'm aiming to do three. There are five on my list, but I'm aiming for three. Um, and I have three particular ones I'm going to do. I'm not going to tell you which ones they are in case I don't have access for them. But uh, I do have three that I am intending on getting through that I'm excited for at least a little bit. Uh, this one I wasn't like that excited about, but like mainly because I thought they were going to screw it up. Um, but I was cautiously excited for it because I grew up loving R.L. Stein and I love the Fear Street book. So I was really excited to, to watch this film and the other two films that follow it. Um, so without further ado, let's talk about Fear Street Part 1, 1994. Fear Street Part 1, 1994, was released in 2001. It was written by Phil Grazia Day and uh, Leah Janik, and directed by Leah Janik. <sighs> okay, this film surprised me on many, many levels. So I go into this kind of thinking it's going to be bad, because one, I don't really like slasher films, um, and it definitely was branded as a slasher film. Um, but for two, a lot of horror adaptations from books aren't good, and as much as I grew up loving the Fear Street novels, I know they aren't the best. I know the R.L. Stein's Goosebumps in general aren't really the best, um, but regardless, I was cautiously excited about it because it was like a blast of the past watching, you know, something that I read about, you know, ten years ago. Um, so I was really excited to, to actually be able to do that, but still cautiously nervous because I was pretty confident it was going to be a bad movie. I'm very happy to say that I am wrong. I was wrong. This movie's really good. I was really impressed with it. And I, I want to talk, so first of course, no spoilers. There's going to be no spoilers for this film. Um, but I think it's important that we discuss tone first. And what I mean by that is like, yeah, it, I guess maybe it's more like genre. But like, it feels like a, a 90s slasher film. I'm really impressed with that. It feels very much like a slasher film. And I'm really, really, really impressed with that. Like, in terms of it being accurate to when it would be, right? Because a lot of times I'm like, yeah, it took place in 1990, but like they have cell phones. Here they don't, and I was really impressed with like that actual use of technology that they had back then. Um, but what's important here is genre, right? Of course, it is a horror, um, and I, I can confidently say it is horror, not thriller. I think it is horror. Um, and what's kind of the issue with R.L. Stein? is that he writes horror for children, right? It's like an introduction to Stephen King. Like when you're younger, if you watch, if you if you read R.L. Stein, there's a good chance when you get older and you're a teenager, you'll like Stephen King. But for kids, you know, really young teenagers, or even sometimes younger than that, like me, I started reading them when I was like eight. Um, I used to read R.L. Stein all the time. And so it's written for kids. But this movie is not at all for kids. Um, this movie is for adults, and I think that's smart for a variety of reasons. One, most of the time when you're doing something like this where you have, you're doing an adaptation of something that's old, right? Say I were to make a movie about an old, old book from like the 70s, right? You're going to want to aim it towards the audience that might have read that when it came out, right? So me, when Fear Street came out, of course, I'm not sure if I read it when it came out, I read it afterwards, I probably read it afterwards, but still, you know, Fear Street came out a very long time ago, a very, very long time ago. And so the idea of maybe pushing it back so it's more adult is really smart on their part for their marketing team and for all of that. So good for them. They did mark it up. It is definitely really scary. There's a lot of like actual horror themes. There's actually quite a lot of like sexual innuendos I was impressed with. There's a lot of swearing. Um, and it looks like in the second part there's even more. So I'm, I'm, I'm like impressed. I'm very impressed. That brings me to my next thought about genre, which is that it is also a young adult film. I love YA films, they're my favorite, uh, and this definitely is one. It's a YA horror, which we don't have a whole lot of, and when they do make them, they're not very good. And I think that the YA was in, like, like interwoven really, really well. There are a couple issues, and, and this is really where, like, this is like one of my only issues. I didn't like the main character love interest thing, okay? Because there's a main character, her name is Dina, who is like in love with Sam, but Sam just moved like half an hour away and then she's being a total diva about it. She's like, well, we can't be together then if you're moving away. And Sam's like, but why? Because like it's only half an hour. And she's like, well, you're in a different town. And like, it's this weird like back and forth. You know, I love you. I hate you. I love you. I hate you. Which like normally I think I would like, but in, in terms of like it being in a horror film, it just kind of felt like it was really, really dragged. Um, which sucks because like the rest of the movie is like pretty well paced. 
Um, I was impressed. It's an hour and 45 minutes, and that was a really good runtime, I think. Um, any longer, it would have definitely dragged. Any shorter, and we wouldn't have gotten enough information. So I was really impressed by the pacing here. I'm not usually impressed by pacing by films, so I was really impressed with that. Um, but the fact that they kept bringing it up, they were like, oh, but she doesn't like her, but she loves her. And like, I get it. It's cool. I get that we're trying to integrate these themes, but make it a little more subtle, I think, would have been better for it being more of a horror film. Um, so when you're watching a horror film and, and you get these parts where it's kind of like dull and we're kind of getting into the characters, which is good. I like the character development. But this is character development that I don't think really particularly matters a whole lot if it goes back and forth. I mean, if we were to just pick one, I think it might have been better. Um, and it definitely did drag out the first half of the film a little bit. The second half of the film is just straight awesome. Like, I do love it. The special effects are fantastic. There's a bunch of, of twists and turns that I just, I freaking love. I, it kind of surprised me, honestly. I was sitting here just like, just chilling. And all of a sudden, like, this twist would happen to be like, like, I, at all. I had no idea that this was coming. And, I don't know, it felt really raw for me, you know? It was like reading the books for the first time and, like, being like, because, of course, R.L. Stein, while he's no Stephen King, has a lot of twists in his books. And, of course, at the ends, there's always cliffhangers. And, yes, this does end off in a cliffhanger, but make sure you stick around after the To Be Continued sign. There is a trailer for the second one. So you're going to want to stick around for that. I'm sure the trailer is already up on YouTube somewhere. Um, so if you're interested in watching the second one, there's that. And for the most of the film, um, even though I was watching it, I was still very concerned because I know that the sequel and then the following sequel are all prequels, right? So we have we have 1994 today. Next week they have 1978, and then it's 1666. So I was very very nervous about how we were going to progress farther in the story while going back in time. But the trailer did fix that problem. I'm very excited about it. I think it's gonna be really cool. I really truly am very excited for the next film. Um, this is like really everything that I wanted. And the performances, oh, the performances were great. I don't want to talk about all of them because it would take too long, but like, I do want to talk about one in particular, which is the main character. Um, and that is Kiana Madiera, who plays Dina. And she is fantastic here. She's really good. I, aside from her character being kind of annoying in terms of the whole I love you, I hate you thing, um, she's really solid. Especially towards the end, like she gets way better. I think that her performance ramps. Um, I think that every character is really, really solid here. The guy, there's a, there's two males in the main group, and like they're both fantastic. I didn't mention them like on my report or anything, but they are really, really good. I really, I was impressed by the performances. Um, I don't know how old everybody else is, but Kiana Madiera is 28 years old, playing a high schooler, and she it works. I was really impressed because like I heard about the casting, and I was like, are you sure we want to do that? It, yes, it, it, very, very good, very well done. Um, it worked very, very well. I was very impressed. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed the performances here. And there's there's so many performances. I mean, there's like five main cast members, and I can't talk about all of them, um, but they're really good. But I, I, I don't want to talk too long because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but if you like thriller or horror or slasher, this is for you. I don't even like slasher films, and I, I really did like this movie. I'm so, so excited for the next two. So I'm going to go ahead and give Fear Street Part 1, 1994, an A-. I will definitely be checking out the next one, which comes out next week, and then the last one comes out on the um, 16th? Yes, on the 16th of July. So the next two weeks, every Friday, we'll be, uh, we'll be doing those. Um, but yeah, later on today, I have two more coming out. I'm not going to tell you what they are because I don't, I'm not sure if I'll be able to watch them. Um, but I do fear because we can have two more movies coming out today uh, for reviews. And next week, I already know I'm doing Fear Street Part 2 and Black Widow for sure. There might be a third one, but I'm honestly I'm not interested in it, so I probably won't. But we're at least seeing those two. I was hoping to be able to see a Thursday premiere, but I actually work on Thursday, so... Which I get, it's fine. But I'm really excited, so make sure you guys are subscribing so you can tune in and, and follow along. Um, I have reviews coming out every single day. Fridays are just my big days, so if you caught me on a Friday, hello. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in, in like old movies and stuff like that, I do all that kind of stuff. If you have a request, I also do requests on Fridays, so drop those in the comments below and I will add it to my Google Doc. So I can't promise that I get to them soon because my, my entire year is planned out, but if anything drops, I will add in whatever's newest. So make sure you guys are requesting things. I do listen to requests. Um, I think that is important. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. If I'm not, oh yes, one more thing. Subscribe because I'm not, once I get to 150 subscribers, I'm going to be dressing like Spider-Man and going to Walmart and filming it for you guys. So if you guys want to see that, make sure that you guys are subscribing. And as always, keep watching movies and television, stay educated, and I'll see you guys in the next video.